co-founder and CEO of Desta Global. He's going to be giving his thoughts on the topic of e-commerce automation. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've been seeing the sessions in the morning. It's about technology. Uh, this is a slight deviation from what you might be expecting from this presentation. I would be talking about technology, but majorly about agriculture. So Desktop Global is an ag tech, uh, a technology and agriculture company. We are focused completely on agriculture. Uh, we run an e-commerce, uh, which, which runs B2B. So on that e-commerce, we connect uh, retailers with agri-manufacturers. And we have applications which run for the farmers and for the retailers. Uh, so uh, before I go into what we do, I thought I'll give you a slight perspective about uh, you know, India and, and agriculture. I don't know if you can see the screen. The top three agriculture uh, countries around the world are US, China, and India. Uh, but uh, in China and India, the difference between China, India, and US is that the kind of uh, agriculture production which is done in these two countries, it's majorly for self-consumption. Now, China and India, we all know, are very populous. So majority of production which happens is for consumption within the country. But, but US uh, is the net, is, uh, ex, you know, exports, it's, it's the top most exporting country in agriculture commodities. So if, if we compare US and India, if you can look, the, look at the map on top, you know, it's, it's to scale. So you can see that India is almost one third of US. Uh, but look at the population, you know, the India, the population in India is almost four times that of US. So the point is that there are multiple challenges when we try and solve the agriculture issues, and especially in India. Uh, if we look at the, the, the second point about the arable, the total arable land that we have, uh, comparing that with US, we have, you know, one third of the arable land. Uh, in India, uh, but the major challenge comes because the productivity is very, very low in, in, in India. So um, if, we, if we look at some of the crops which are mentioned there, like rice uh, is majorly consumed by Indians, but in terms of production, we are almost, you know, two and a half times uh, lower than that of the, the production which is there in US. So. Desktop Global was started with the objective of helping the farmers. Uh, so uh, how do we use technology? How do we help the farmers? How do we solve some of these challenges? Uh, multiple challenges, uh, you know, that we need to solve. One is uh, technology is not really understood well in the rural uh, uh, segments of India. Uh, while the mobile companies are focusing on rural, uh, which means that there are a lot of smartphones being used in, in the villages today, uh, but there's still a lot of awareness which needs to be created. So the, multi, the, other, the other set of challenges that agriculture uh, you know, comes from the distribution point of view. Now it's very similar to what we find in urban. Uh, so there is a company, there are distributor, there is a retailer, and then there is a customer. So in this case, the customer is the farmer. Now, if, when we, when we think about e-commerce, you know, we start comparing ourselves with Amazon. Uh, and I think a lot of companies which start uh, in the e-commerce, in agriculture in India, start following the e-commerce model of Amazon. You know, so the Amazon model primarily is about cutting the retailer out and the distributor out and directly home delivering to the end customer. So you see, uh, this kind of model doesn't work, uh, you know, so because the farmer likes to go and buy from a retailer and he wants to, he likes to discuss that, uh, you know, he, he likes to discuss his soil type, 
He likes to discuss what kind of weather, what kind of products should he be using on a particular crop. So there is a lot of uh, discussion and there is a lot of scientific information that a farmer needs before he starts thinking about a certain crop. Now, is that information readily available? Uh, no, it is not. So that is part of the problem that we need to also solve. The second, second part of the problem is, uh, uh, you know, the e-commerce the e example uh, also is, you know, we as a urban customer could order a TV or a fridge from an e-commerce website. Now, our livelihood does not depend on that TV or a fridge. But in case of the farmer, his livelihood, his whole year's income depends on the kind of crop he chooses. So hence, uh, the skin in the game is, you know, the, and the risks are much higher uh, in case of agri e-commerce. One wrong crop and his ear is gone. One wrong chemical used on his crop and then his, you know, livelihood for that year is gone. So hence, it is very important that everything that we do in technology in agriculture, there's, there's hardly any chance of, uh, you know, failing or hardly any chance of error coming in. Uh, so also, if you look at the other part of the challenges is that the spends of the agri manufacturers is pretty high, even in, in agriculture. So from our data, it, it, it's, uh, uh, it's clear that around $2 billion are spent on marketing by agri input companies in India. Now that uh, is a huge amount considering that the farmers at times don't gain much. Uh, so, that, so, so the point is that conventional e-commerce uh, in agriculture would not work and hence there has to be a different kind of a thinking which would happen. If we look at the kind of platform that we've built, uh, our platform basically uh, takes help from the manufacturers and the retailers so as to be able to serve the farmers better. So while we have our e-commerce running between a retailer and a manufacturer, so a retailer sitting in a village uh, close to uh, either the village or in a market close to the village, he can use his mobile to order products from hundreds of manufacturers. Uh, he not just can buy those products from manufacturer, but he can also promote those products to farmers around him. And the farmer uses a mobile application, which is created by us. And, you know, so the retailer's shop actually goes online, and the farmer can then buy from him. So, uh, at one end, we help him source products, the retailer, and on the other end, we help the retailer uh, promote to the farmer and sell it ultimately. So uh, the biggest difference between us and other e-commerce companies is that we do not alienate the retailer. We work with him. We partner with the retailer. So while other e-commerce companies just do away with him, we work with him. The other thing about rural logistics is delivering products to interior villages is a very costly affair. Uh, there are not many logistic uh, uh, services. The, the services are very expensive at times. So we encourage our farmers to come and buy from the retailer. So that's again another big difference from other e-commerce companies that our, we don't build warehouses or delivery units across the nation but we consider our retailers as our warehouse or the delivery units. So not technically not a delivery unit, but it's like the farmer comes and buys from him. So a farmer on his application can select at a particular deal and then he can go and buy it from, from the, uh, the retailer. So one thing that, uh, you know, again, is because of the retailers coming into the picture, uh, when we developed the mobile application, we were handing out deals or schemes to the farmers from our own pocket. Now being a startup and to be able to working at a very low margin and then passing on deals to the farmer was a very, very expensive affair for us. But when we, when we developed this platform and when we connected our e-commerce system with the mobile applications and when we gave the power in the hand of the retailers, today around 13,000 deals are live and our retailers themselves give those deals to the farmers. So that is, again, how we use technology 
So one of the big lessons that uh, I have learned uh, is one, we cannot blindly copy a big e-commerce model, even though we are e-commerce company, but our market is very, very different from an urban market. So uh, the second big learning that, that I had was, uh, you know, you need to find partners in the local villages. Now, when I talk about partnership also, uh, I also learned that online uh, would work when, when there's a new concept which is being launched. So an online would work only if we have a strong offline presence. Now we cannot have 200 people on the ground, so we need to have experts who know the lay of the land in all those villages. So we don't, sitting in our head office in Mumbai, we do not understand every village. But the retailer who sits, who has a shop there for 20 or 30 years, he understands the lay of the land. And we look at his expertise and hence empower him to make the right decisions. So it's truly that when we say that technology is an enabler, in our case, it is completely true that we enable and empower our stakeholders so that they can take the right decisions. So some of the things that we do is uh, we bring, you know, we bring a brick and mortar shop of the retailer online. Uh, we've got thousands of products that a retailer from his mobile phone can order from hundreds of companies. Uh, this whole industry works on uh, credit, you know, uh, like most of the retail channels, there's a credit which is offered to the manufacturer, from the manufacturers to the distributors and the retailers. But in our case, because there are deals for the farmers and the deals can only be availed if he buys on cash, so a much needed cash comes into the system. And um, the retailers, also, for the retailers also, it's a business tool. Because we have data of, uh, you know, on the mobile application about which products are being bought by the farmers, at what price points. So because of those, that data, we analyze that and give information as a business tool to the dealer. So the retailers can then take the right decision. So they know which products are selling, at what price point, they know which competing products are selling. You know, they know which farmers are liking certain products. In, in a certain weather, what kind of products should be should be actually, you know, something that they should stock in their shop. Um, so there are, uh, you know, there are other uh, options, you know, because we partner with retailers, we also partner with manufacturers. So at one end, we help them sell products to our retailers. On the other end, we also have 100,000, 300,000 farmers who are on our application or on our Facebook page or on our WhatsApp. So we have, over the period of last five years, you know, built a good connection with, with farmers and the retailers. So, uh, uh, so we help them, uh, the manufacturers, promote to the farmers. Uh, there are multiple examples of, you know, multiple companies who have gained from uh, our connects within the villages. And uh, just one example of uh, 10 small manufacturers who, uh, you know, from a two, working in two districts now are working today in two years time they're working in 35 districts in Maharashtra. So some of the things about how technology could be used uh, to help uh, you know the whole community. And for the farmers the best thing is that they get access to multiple deals. Uh, so today as I said earlier there are 13,000 plus deals for the farmers today. So the and I can proudly also say that we, uh, the prices that we offer to the farmer are at least 10% better than uh, any online uh, marketplace for agriculture inputs or um, any other shop that is on, on, uh, there on the ground. So our objective at one end is to help the farmers save money when they buy inputs. And the second objective is, I'll come to that uh, in the later slides. Uh, in the mobile application, apart from the deals that are there for the farmers, we also have a Facebook kind of a page. But again, it's very technical. Uh, these are on the Facebook, uh, you know, the, the, it's called Bodhi tree. Uh, it's like the knowledge, knowledge tree. And on, in this section, we have real life stories of farmers uh, and what they did in their field uh, and what kind of lessons did they learn. And this, these lessons are shared with, with the broader farming community. So there's a like, share, and comment button which, which the farmers can 
actually like and connect with those uh, influential farmers. Uh, this is also a promotion tool for the companies. So we, while we look at all the information that is coming here, it should be useful. So it's not technically a promotion, but it's majorly a knowledge sharing tool for the farmers. <coughs> uh, so, so taking it further, the offline, uh, you know, you know, so so as to be able to have a very strong offline uh, network, we also work with ambassadors in the local communities. Uh, so there are close to 200 and 20 people who are farmers in across our uh, in in the state that we operate in so they are our uh, you know they spread word of mouth publicity about us they they go and help us connect with more and more farmers so so this is again an example of how just building an online system will not work uh, we also need to you know complement it it with a strong offline network on the ground some of the uh, you know testimonials about uh, so this is a retailer who's who's used our product and who's got some, a lot of benefits. This is the farmer who actually uh, read a story on uh, on the Facebook kind of a page, you know, the Bodhi tree, and he uh, earned uh, two thousand dollars plus of profit within a few months. So what? What exactly does, you know, the, so how do we also think about solving the major challenges, which brings me uh, to, uh, to the point about, you know, rocket science. Uh, I, uh, so this is not my learning for the two years. It's like rocket science is something which I learned maybe 10 years back. <laughs> so I am not talking about the exact rocket science. You know, in our, I, I used to work for a multinational company. And um, <clears throat> so in our discussions in, with the seniors in the multinational company and the scientists that, so I have closely worked in agriculture all my career. Uh, so I did my MBA from uh, IIM Ahmedabad in, in India. And then after that I chose to work in agriculture. So I've spent close to 12 years uh, on the other side selling products to the farmers and solving the business challenges and the distribution challenges and before I moved into the ag tech side completely. So the last three years I've spent only on the tech side so as to be able to solve the agriculture challenges. Now, in my previous company, that multinational company, you know, when we, we would have discussions and brainstorming sessions, uh, a favorite quote which was used across was, you know, when we would discuss agriculture and the challenges, people would say that it's not rocket science, you know. And I used to like that term a lot, you know, it's not rocket science, you know, it, it used to, um, when I would ask a certain question, uh, you know, and then there would be experts who would say, oh, it's not rocket science. I used to think that those people are very, very intelligent. Uh, for me, agriculture always was very complex and tough. And uh, I would hear this, it's not rocket science, you know. So I, you know, one of those discussions when I was having at home with my wife and I used that term, uh, it's not rocket science with her. And then she told me that only rocket science is rocket science, you know? So, and, and that made me realize, you know, it was like a revelation to me that he, that's true. It's only rocket science is rocket science and agriculture is agriculture. And agriculture has its own complexities. Rocket science has its own complexities. So, so coming back to why rocket science is important, uh, you know, so, when we look at agriculture and look at the challenges, it has to be real. We need to understand the problems. We need to understand the problems of the stakeholders. We need to understand the problems of the farmers. And it can only happen when we do not, um, you know, compare it with something else, you know. When we, it will only happen when we understand the real intricacies and real complexities. So it all starts with accepting the fact that we don't know all the answers. And, and we didn't, and nobody does. And that's why when we work in, when we start up, and when we work in agriculture, it is all about collaboration. I don't think there's any competition. I think it's only collaborating with the government, with other companies, with the multinational companies, with the retailers on the ground, and the farmers on the ground. So when a farmer downloads the application, basis is geolocation, basis the date and time, 
we start showing some predictions to the farmer. And those predictions are very simply because we will be able to partner with a weather company which has local weather stations in the villages. Uh, because we are tracking the disease and pest incidents that are happening in local regions, we should be able to start predicting what kind of pest and disease attack should a farmer be expecting. And we could also, because we are tracking what the farmers are buying and what they are growing, we can also tell him, basis the season, you know, what kind of crops and what are the particular steps that he should use when he's doing, using a certain crop. So, you know, I'll not go into the intricacies of what I'm talking about, uh, but I, I'll just show you a few examples of how it can be done. So let's say a farmer selects a crop, let's say a rice crop that he wants to, you know, uh, sow this season. So the application would show him that this is the kind of profit that he could earn. But the application would also recommend to him that he should use, let's say, a tomato, uh, because if he uses a tomato, the chances of having a profit are 40% higher than if he used a, a rice. And because we have data that we track on a daily basis, we, we are able to predict this kind of a thing. And once a, the farmer selects a certain products, then we recommend multiple products that a farmer could possibly buy. Now, all of these predictions, how are they useful for the retailers and manufacturers? It, it is useful for them to plan how they should sell to the farmers because we know the local demand or we can forecast the local demand with a reasonable amount of accuracy so we can, we can better guide the retailers and the manufacturers to use those products because we expect the farmer to come and buy that in a month's time. Uh, so, you know, the, the machine learning in our agriculture is very, very different. Um, so there's data that we have on the applications. You know, the farmers are buying certain products, the dealers are selling certain products or promoting certain products. There are responses to certain products, you know. So there's data on the application, but, but we need much more to be able to predict that, uh, you know, agriculture accurately. So we need to uh, use data from the satellite and start studying the images. We need to have the analysis of the soil. If you look at India, language changes every 100 kilometers. So if language changes, culture changes also. So with, with all of these changes, the finer nuances of doing anything on the ground also changes. So we need to be able to have people on the ground who can pass on information. So one advantage that we have is we have close to three, 4,000 retailers who, who are our partners and who work with us. And most of these retailers actually go and do visits to the farming community. So they go to their plots, they, they are kind of an advisor to them. So this, is inf this information plugin, we've not done that yet, but we will be plugging in, we'll, we'll be creating a section. Our dealer app retailer application and farmer application work in, works in sync with each other. So we just have to build a certain section where a retailer could also plug in information so as to be able to help the farmers better. And then there are sections which we'll create where the farmer could actually, we could use a satellite image, we could predict, we could see that there is a certain problem in a certain section of the farm. So we can just tell the farmer that go and click a picture of that, of that portion of the farm so that we can build that algorithm to understand what kind of problems or, or what kind of images means what kind of problem. And we have manufacturers who are, who are also, who they spend a lot of uh, time and money, they've spent decades of time in the research and development. Uh, the big companies have field trials going on on the ground in each region. So they understand in a certain geography what kind of products or what kind of package of practices work. So building that information also in the system uh, would ultimately be, you know, uh, you know this, this will help us, uh, uh, you know, get the right kind of information and ultimately help the farmers get, uh, you know, uh, the, the best of yield. So at one end, our plan is to reduce the cost when the farmer buys a product and on the other end, what we want to do is we want to help the farmers produce more from his limited land that he has. Uh, 
our mission is actually not to do with e-commerce and technology, it's to do with bringing passion back into farming. Uh, we, we all know the population is increasing, uh, the productions are not going up, so where does food in the table, food in, on our table come from? You know, most, uh, when I go and meet farmers and I interview them, uh, I realize that close to 40% of the farmers do not want to do farming. Uh, if they had an alternate option, they would quit farming. The son and daughters of the farmers of today do not want to do farming. You know, the farmers want their son and daughters to go and study in a college and earn degrees. So we are sitting on a problem, a big problem, if we don't have the farming community and if the farming community is not incented uh, to stay involved in, farm, uh, in agriculture, you know, then, they, they, then it's a global problem. Then, then we do not have enough food on our plate or it will be very, very expensive. So on that note, uh, I would end my presentation. I have around five minutes if there's any question and answers. If not, then okay, sure. Hello, I'm Aturim. Yeah. I'm a UX consultant. I have some amount of uh, rural advertising background also, which is why I'm asking you this question. My first question, I have two questions. My first question is, uh, how do you really establish uh, people to use the application? I mean, if you see in rural, at least in India, rural India, the smartphone adaptation is still in a very alarming number. And with yeah. illiteracy and things like that, I mean, I, I don't know if, uh, you know, do you really See, have a case study which backs all your, you know, the content that you told today, one. Sure. The second thing, I, I have two questions, let me tell you the second question also. How do you, uh, you know, if we're talking about illiteracy, so how, how is your user interface? Because I come from that domain, how is your application addressing uh, the illiteracy bit? I mean, are you doing something on the user experience bit for that? Or how are you handling that? This, looks like a regular application which an educated person would use, but that's not the case in rural uh, areas, right? So uh, the first question was about how the many adaptation. smartphones are there? Uh, the adaptation of the uh, application itself, because you see the regular phone still in use. I mean, smartphone adaptation is still less. Mm -hmm. This is a, st a smartphone app, I'm assuming, yeah. right? So we uh, do multiple things. One, we, uh, you know, each and every field team of us does pharma meetings two times a day. Uh, the objective of the pharma meeting is to tell the farmers that on this application you get deals on the agri inputs. Now every farmer has to buy inputs to use on his agriculture land. Uh, the value proposition for him is that he gets hundreds and hundreds of deals regularly. And on the mobile application, the first screen is the list of products that are available on discounts and where are they available, which retailer are they available at, you know, and he can very conveniently call. So UI, UX of the application is something that we've worked on very hard. We've had around 60 iterations of the application. If you go on Play Store and if you see, then you'll see 60 versions of the application. The reason is that we made a lot of errors in understanding. While it was very simple design, but we realized when we would go into the market. So one of the things that I do personally is I visit villages very, very regularly. And the core team at Desta Global also keeps visiting the markets and meeting the stakeholders very regularly. So we take feedback. A lot of sections of the application you would see are designed basis the feedback that we received directly from the farmers or from the retailers who also understands how the bulk of the population behaves. Uh, the content is uh, regional. Uh, it's in Marathi uh, when we do it in Maharashtra. Uh, there are a lot of images. They can click on image. It's very simple design. And the flow in the various sections also we've taken care of. So we have, uh, in the last 10 months of the application going live, we have close to 100,000 farmers on the application. Uh, so one is the farmer meeting that we do. We also, because of our connects with the retailers and the partnerships with, with the manufacturers, the manufacturer, when they go and do a farmer meeting or when they go and do promotion, they help download our application. So their deals are on the app, on the app itself. So we've got big manufacturers, big sales team going out and helping us download the application. We've got our retailers who are there on the ground, you know, because their deals are live on the farmer application, it's in their interest to get the farmers also on the application. So we've got multiple stakeholders who help us download the application. Your second question was? 
You've answered both my questions. I have some more, but I think I can sure. take it offline. Sure. Thank you. Hi, my name is Arvind. Hi. How did you uh, address the issue of uh, uh, competing with the local distributors? For example, you listed uh, the tractors at 10% cheaper than what they mm. would get. So how did you uh, work with uh, that problem where you know, uh, your products are listed at a lesser price compared to what may be available in the market there at the retail stores or, or with the distributors? So how was that a problem? Yes. So, you know, one of the problems, the major problem is if the margins that are being passed on to the distributor or the retailer, you know, different from what the company is offering. You know, so uh, let's look at it this way. This is, there's a manufacturer, there's a distributor, there's a retailer, and then there's a farmer, the end customer. In our case, there's no distributor. So we are an e-commerce which connects the retailer with the manufacturer. What we do is we try and match the discount or the margin that a manufacturer from his distributor gives to the retailer. So we match that price, but we then encourage the retailer to pass on a certain discount to the farmer because he can connect with more and more farmers. He does that now. You know, I initially, I mentioned in the presentation that initially we used to pass on that discount from our own margins uh, to the farmer. Uh, but now the retailer is passing on, and because it's a closed system, it's not spoiling, or it's not creating a price war, so to say. I just have one more follow-up. So you have the recommendation system which says, hey, instead of growing the chili, try the tomato, you may make another 40% more, right? If uh, many farm farmers in that particular region go in for the recommendation, will it cause an oversupply problem? Or how do you counter that? Yeah, it, it would. Uh, and that's why our, uh, you know, at this point, we are very at a very basic stage in, in the predictions. You're right. Uh, if, if everybody starts doing that, then there'll be oversupply and the prices would go down. So the system has to, once there are a certain number of farmers who've clicked on a tomato, then it should remove tomato and bring the other product on there, you know, so as to make them. And uh, time's up. So if there are other questions, I could take them offline. Thank you. Yeah, any, any more questions? I'm sure you will be happy to answer them during the coffee break, which we've got now. Uh, can we have a round of applause for Siddhartha Chowdhury, co-founder and CEO of Desta Global? Thank you so much. Um, as I said, we will have a quick tea break right now. If we can just have 20